Good evening, everyone. Welcome to FGM Ecast for your Thursday night. You can see out there that is the desert, and that means one thing and one thing only that we are at Vegas, baby. Yeah, and we're here with Carl. Good evening, Carl Withy. Good evening, everybody. Good evening to everybody here in the Nevada desert, of course. Fantastic place. Las Vegas, somebody is going to go home with a great win, and then lots more people are going to go home with empty pockets that's the thing about <laughs> vegas it either goes well or it doesn't and uh who will it work out for tonight who are you betting on tonight folks that's the big one um it's going to be a tricky race of course vegas it's one of those tracks that can catch people out a little bit uh, especially if you're through turns uh three and four just exiting turn four watch out for that one but we'll see how this race goes absolutely i think uh, someone's gonna roll snake eyes and someone's gonna get the perfect seven that they need so who is it going to be tonight? Let me go get my Mitch Motorsports t-shirt on. Hi, Glue. In the crowd, welcome again. Uh, your man in the Mitch Motorsport entry, Josh Wickermore, currently second in practice. So he is looking quick tonight. And, uh, Carl, just wanted to point out again, just if you cast your eye over to that timing chart, and we have three cars on the identical. There is a 100th or, sorry, 1,000th between Micklemore and Witcher, but... Reflected on the timing monitor there as exactly the same time. We're back. Well, Wellman and Gallagher are both on almost identical times as well. It is very close throughout the field. Um, it is going to be one of those nights. I think we'll see with qualifying if we get another. I think if we get another identical time, um, uh, we might have to buy some lottery tickets because it's a sign about something. Yeah, I have to look into it. Um, Obviously, so the format tonight, we've got practice here. We will have qualifying, and then there is an interview that you did with Andrew Dyson uh, as we continue to make our way through introducing the drivers in the chase, the 11 drivers in the chase this year. And um, we've got that coming up between as we uh, switch over to the main game where the uh, top uh, 30 runners will be participating in this race tonight. Yeah, that's it. We've got 33 drivers out there at the moment, so that means three drivers will be uh, we'll be uh, having to sit it out and not start the race, unfortunately. Uh, a few drivers locked in, of course, from previous races, but then those last 10 spots are open to anyone, uh, and it's all about qualifying performance, so who can actually get that qualifying performance out there and get a good job and try and get into the race tonight? And uh, there's a few drivers that will want to do that because they want to make a big splash towards the end of the season and get the, uh, get the end of their year off to a good start. You know, of course, we're four of ten rounds in. This is the fourth of ten rounds into the chase. So uh, we've still got a little while to go. Here's six more races. We've got some street uh, circuits or some circuit racing, I should say. Not street circuits. We've got some circuit racing coming up as well. So um, there's uh, a few Talladegas uh, still to come. So plenty of racing left in the cup for people to make a challenge. But it has been the Mitch Motorsport story. Um, they've had two full, grid, uh, two full podium lockouts uh, out of the three races so far, DPR taking out the other lockout. So at the moment, the challenge is laid down for anyone to try and infiltrate one of these two teams and get themselves up onto uh, any step, let alone the top step of the podium. Yeah, that's it. It's It's been a really, really tight season. And the fact that the teams have been so dominant as well, that's been something that has been a bit of a surprise because uh, seeing all three well, three cars of the same team locking out the front row of the grid here in Ansgar is a rare rarity, especially on the oval side of things. Uh, we have seen DPR do it on the road courses, but we know that DPR are very strong on the road courses. So it it was sort of was one of those not overly surprising things, but even still, it was very rare that we would see all three cars of the same team in the uh, in the booth at the end. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and the yeah, past yeah. Three, three rounds, we've had it from Mitch Motorsport, as he said, twice, and DPR once, and all of those on ovals as well. So showing that all of those teams are just absolutely on the top of the game. And, uh, Mitch Motorsport, 31 entry, looks fantastic under lights here. There's uh, got a minute and a half to go. Solo qualifying as usual. If uh, you're just joining us, that is how it is run. And uh, there'll be uh, two laps for them to set their best. Expect that uh, second lap to probably be the one. Just uh, just behind uh, the uh, purple Jason Martin entry as well is uh, Josh McMore just coming up into that. Barry Neal's just set a really quick time at the top of the chances there, so that might have been uh, at the benefit of some draft. 
He's, uh, he's gone quickest with a 29.83. You do get that little bit of advantage from the draft, of course, here. Um, it's, as they say, a cookie cutter circuit. Uh, 2.4 kilometers long, uh, very similar to a few tracks around there, you know, with the very straight back end, the tribal section at the front and the four corners around the sides. Uh, but it does lead to fans some fantastic racing and Las Vegas has got a few different surprises up its sleeve. They, they all have their own different feel to them as well. It's one of the things I love about oval circuits is they can all look pretty much identical, but when you race on them, they race differently. And it's something that people that aren't used to the sport don't really, it's hard to understand until you actually get a chance to drive out on these tracks. Just practicing some pit entries here, Andrew Dyson. There might be Phil Otto as well, potentially. And Tristan Cock there in the background, well. I believe. Yeah, so just practicing pit entry. It's going to be important tonight. We've seen before that you can uh, lose a race by overshooting your pit box. Or certainly by getting a uh, a drive-through for speeding your pit lane. So there's uh, plenty of uh, practice required there. There's uh, one of the skills just pulls into line. And, uh, There's no we... limiters on these cars either, and that's something that's really, really important to remember is there are no limiters in these vehicles. So you have to do it all by the eyeball and keep an ear on the old engine revs as well. So it makes it a little bit trickier, and you can have some accidents of speeding in pit lane. So we're going to jump on board tonight with the man who is the subject of our interview at halftime, Andrew Dyson. He's just uh, going to trick us a bit here is he's just pulling up and waiting no he is going to jump back out so uh we'll jump back on with him and just sit on board with him here perhaps just practicing a uh, a start there getting, out of a pit lane. Of, getting a bit of a feel of the car might have just had something that he didn't quite like the feel of there and just decided just to restart that one um so the man that will be subject to the interview tonight, Mr. Andrew Dyson DPR, the orange DPR coin boy, of course. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier for us to spot the cars apart, which is really, really handy. So coming on to the front section here, so it's not a straight, it is a triangle section. So you can see there's a bit of curving on the front straight here. Across the line we go down towards turns one and two. You're gonna be going into here, almost full throttle there can be a little tiny hint of a lift when you're behind a car. Generally, you might just lift off to around about 95%, 90% throttle in that corner. Keeps it nice and flat. In to three and four now. This is sometimes where you need to do a tiny little lift because turn four can catch you out. It can get a little bit bumpy through this section. Just hear the engine just having a little breathe through the mid corner. Daiso cuts it down very hard across the triangle there. Straight down low him up into yeah, P8 eight. and this one should be the quick one for him hopefully that's what he'll be hoping at least so again through turns one and two gets nice and close to the wall you want to run slightly higher here in the race but in qualifying you'll see them run slightly lower and try to take advantage of the shorter section of the track of course so you try and make the track as short as possible and Dyson gets right down below the line early there gets across the line and gets up to P1 just having a little bit of a chuckle there, Carl, uh, Joshua, Carol Walden, Phil Otto, Philip Wally, Justin Witcher, all with identified, all with identical qualifying times, and Lachlan Urquio has just joined that party of a 30.21. So five drivers with identical qualifying times there. They have been picked, of course, by Daiso with the 30.13. Gary Wellman's currently sitting in second with a 30.17 equal with Greg Spencer as well. So a uh, couple of names up at the top there just see how close it is. Look at that pack there. Sixth through ninth, all with identical times, including Urquhart. Sorry, six through tenth. is Griffiths, Scotty Griffiths, another strong performance from him in qualifying. Cal 30.12 goes to the top of the charts. Got the bit between the teeth after last night. Scotty Griffiths in the number five. Barry Neal now um, jumping up to the top of that lead pack with Hamish Gallagher. So it looks like there's a little bit of speed coming into the track as the night sky creeps across. So the slightly later runners seem to have had slightly quicker runs than some of the early runners there. Barry Neal setting an absolute blinder with a 30.073. Um, very, very close to getting into the 29s there for Barry Neal. Uh, that was a really nice lap there. Hamish Gallagher at 30.111. Scott Griffiths, 30.115. 
As I say that, Neil Pearson jumps up to second place with a 30.106. So Pearson getting a really good qualifying run out there as well. Yeah, so as you say, the track's just coming good right at the end of qualifying too because we thought Daiso was quick with a 30.13. Edward Foster's now jumped up into sixth with a 30.14. We've got Jason Martin, who we might jump on board with. He's out there running now on his second lap. Riley Curtis as well. Michael Skurlock too. So there's a few fast guys still to set their laps. Matty Ray's out there now. Dave Douglas as well. So let's see how this alters the finishing order. Dave Douglas gets through his first lap. We expect the second lap to be faster. Jason Martin, how does he get on? This is, crosses the line. Pole position, 30.07, identical with Barry Neal. Riley Curtis jumps up to a 30.13, gets him into sixth. And, and again, Michael Skurlock, 30.07. We've got three drivers in a dead heat on the front row of the grid. Can no. Matty Ray do anything about it? Yeah, Matty Ray, come on. Let's see if you can just get... Point zero zero one faster this time round. Will he manage it? Not quite, unfortunately. That's good enough for P7, though. So let's talk through those first three. Oh, so Jason Martin, a 30.071. Michael Skurlock, 30.072. Barry Neal, 30.073. That's how close it is. And we've got Danny G still to come across the line as well. Don't count him out for bumping his way right up to the top as well. And just waiting for just it to missed tick out over. On that one. Just missed and, out. Yep. Yeah. What's happened there? Has he touched the wall? Has he? Uh, qualifying ended just as he got to the line, I think. So I think he might have just missed just out missed on that one. Just missed the lap one. itself. Okay. Dave Douglas up in the 20th. Well, that is uh, a very, very close qualifying session, as we would expect. But... Uh, Probably not quite that close with multiple drivers on identical times or as uh, identical as they get from our timing monitors, that's for sure. So split by um, thousands. And so it is going to be one close race. We didn't talk too much about tyres and stuff, Carl. We'll have a chat about that in a minute. Dude, uh, before we go uh, into the interview, did you just want to give everyone a rundown on the current standings? Oh, well, I was going to that little bit in the race we'll go through the top five um quickly just before we get to that one so jason martin leads uh with he is uh, 24 points ahead of edward foster in second place joint second place with michael scurlock then it's joint third place for hamish gallagher and josh micklemore 25 points down fourth is danny g 37 points off the lead and fifth is jcw 40 points off the lead so i'll run through the rest of them when we get back uh for the start of the race sounds good Indeed. So what will happen here, we will change over sessions in a uh, minute or two. And we'll uh, get on to an interview between Carl and uh, Andrew Dyson of uh, the DPRSimrigs.com uh, entry. And uh, we'll have a uh, listen to what he has to say uh, about all things sim racing and the like. And uh, we'll bring that to you in a few moments. So... Session here will probably take about 10 minutes to change over and uh, the interview goes for around about seven minutes. So there might be a very, very short interval in between, um, but do stick around. We'll be back with the race here tonight at Las Vegas for the fourth installment of the chase to crown our 2021 ANS Car Cup champion. Good, Good evening, evening everybody, and tonight, tonight we have Mr. Andrew Dyson of DPR. Hello, Dyson, how are you going? Good, yeah, Carl, what's going on, man? Yeah, all good, all good. Um, congratulations on getting into the chase. First year in the chase, obviously. Um, really well done for you. Yeah, not bad. A few road courses helped out. I think a lot of people argue about that, but no, it's good to have a dip in the chase. Obviously, I'm going to talk about that. I mean, you, you've been pretty dominant on the road courses this year. I mean, as we kind of expected. I mean, you are pretty good on those road courses, so I hear. Uh, well, it depends on what series I'm racing, because there's lots of people out there that are better than me. But, um, you know, I like these cars. They're a lot of fun around road courses, and we sort of uh, get around it. Because, um, I mean, we, all the boys in the team, so we get around it a little bit because we yeah, enjoy these cars around road courses, obviously. Yeah, look, you've had some great results on the road courses as well. I mean, obviously, a few wins there. But the big thing this year has been your performance on the ovals. Um, that's definitely something you have really been improving on. 
Yeah, it was definitely fair to say that. Um, I remember at the start of the season, like I think it was uh, Miami that might have been running around in like P20 and I was doing I wrecked out like for P20 or, or something. At that stage, though, to be fair, there was 40 cars in the race. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was spewing on that. And now I'm spewing if I'm like nowhere, kind of like uh, the last race to Bristol last week. But yeah. Yeah, obviously a bit tough at Bristol this time out for you. Um, not quite quite the finish I'm sure you would have wanted. Yeah, well, I mean, still, that's not too bad. 15th, I think it was, from, from the back of the pack. So can't complain about it. It's just the way the race went without any extra caution that a few of us were expecting. I think there was about six of us or so, including the pole sitter and race, or race uh, leader for quite a while there. No caution came, so we all got busted up by that. That's the way it goes, though. Look, that, that's it. Sometimes those cautions fall at the worst possible time, and sometimes they just don't come when you actually need them, which is so frustrating. Um, yeah. Obviously, um, I'm going to have to ask you, uh, what got you into racing? What got me into racing? Um, gee, I don't know. Probably, probably my parents watching or dad watching racing on TV, really, back in the days of early 5 litre touring cars. It's probably the same for a lot of guys around my age, um, having that sort of stuff on TV. and Yeah, well, that's probably about it. Yeah, and what got you into, well, I mean, the big question is, what got you into the oval side of things, NASCAR? Into the oval side of things? I don't really know. Um, I, don't, I really don't know. I just always thought it looked kind of cool and I wanted to get amongst it on our racing because I always knew that, you know, with any sort of racing out there, there's always a lot more to it than what you can actually see. And it's probably no more 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 effect than with circle racing or oval racing because there's so many little nuances with like car positioning and and just um the way you look after the tire and you know run on a good line for a different run on people and and stuff like that like it's i find it really interesting so i, I get around it yeah look and you've done so well this season as well as you say first prop, prop first true season in the cup um we've seen you sort of darting around in some of the other series of course and i think you were in a couple of races last year as well yeah, so last year I only did one race, and then I never I banned myself from coming back because I clearly had no idea what to do, <laughs> and all I was doing was just sending it around and um, not really making friends. So, but I think I think people understand now that I had no idea then, and I'm, I'm, I've got my head around it now. Well, that, that's the big thing is is learning is an important skill in Ansgar, and it's something we definitely love to see because it's you know, you know you can't have a series when you don't have drivers turning up, and you need to actually sometimes help people a little bit to to get them working on an oval because it is such a different series and speaking about that so what was the thing that really helped you get clicking on the oval side of things uh probably race miles more than anything um obviously the team that's that's one that goes without saying but um if it wasn't that it'd have to be race miles and making mistakes really that's simple as that well, look, you can't learn from a mistake if you don't make one. I mean, preferably we don't want to make mistakes, but uh, obviously, you know, learning from mistakes is a big way of improving, and you've improved a lot this season. Five victories outright so far in the Cup Series, uh, the joint highest of anyone next to Michael Skurlock, which is, you know, that, that's saying a lot because Skurley's pretty darn good sometimes. Uh, your teammate, I think, is the second highest with four. That's Neil Pearson. Really good run from you. Can we see any more wins from you for the rest of the chase, do you reckon? I hope so. I think I've I had really good pace at the last race at, at Richmond, but unfortunately I've had some internet dramas with that one. So I think I would have been okay there to at least be up near the front and having a go. Um, this week I, I think I had really good pace as well, but unfortunately my internet dropped out again for qualifying. So um, that's it this week at Bristol, I mean. But um, yeah, there's a few tracks coming up that I like that, that aren't road courses. And um, I think uh, I'll have a, a bit of a shot as long as I get my head around it and get a good quality and... The race goes my way, but that's the funny thing about this uh, sort of race, and anything can happen because it's um, it's oval racing. So, yeah, you can be having a great race one minute, and it can all fall apart the next. Well, that's it. It's that super speedway thing of you know it can all be looking absolutely great for you, and then the next moment you're at the back of the field, not knowing what happened on your roof on fire. Um, yeah, so hopefully we don't see that uh, in the next coming races. What do you reckon is going to be your strongest race? Obviously, we'll we'll circle sh the Charlotte Roval. We'll say that's probably going to be quite strong. But out of the rest of the ovals, um, well, I think I really enjoyed Vegas last time we raced there, so that's a good one that's coming up, and well, it's actually. Yeah, that's the next race we are at, where we're at. So I will look forward to that one. That's probably the one I... I don't know how fast I'll go around there, but that's probably one of the tracks I like most when it comes to the ovals coming up. Um, Martins are not, uh, Martinsville, sorry, is another one I really like, but, you know, the racing can be a little bit 
awkward and follow the leader sort of thing. So that's, I, I would say I like that one more, but I don't because you can't really pass. It's kind of frustrating, but Vegas you can. So I like that track better. Well, we'll keep the fingers crossed. Hopefully things will go well for you at Vegas. Obviously, great result getting into the chase. What are your, obviously, hopes and ambitions going to be winning the chase, of course, but what's your realistic goal for the chase, do you think? Um, just to have clean, consistent runs, because I think that's the most important thing. To go out there and try and win races is uh, awesome, and that's what we all want to try and do. But uh, if you can't, like tonight, you just got to keep it clean and consistent and try and bring it home. Um, yeah, so I'll try my best with that. No, look, we hope to get you back in the booth soon, and look, I'm sure we'll see you before the year is out. Congratulations on such a strong win and getting into the chase, and uh, look, good luck for the rest of the season. No worries. Thanks, man, and uh, thanks for thanks for having a chat, and good luck with the rest of the broadcast for the year. Cheers, Dice. So there we have it. Andrew Dyson in all his glory. Very interesting chat there, actually. He's um he's a pretty reserved guy, Daiso. He um does not credit himself, I think, as much as he probably should. Uh, he's a pretty strong competitor and um, certainly uh, one of the most improved uh, drivers uh, across that span. I didn't realise that about his uh, early career in Anne's car um, with the the one race and the, the self-imposed ban. But um, you certainly wouldn't be able to tell that now. It feels like he's been uh, part of the series for forever. Yeah, that's it. His cup career didn't exactly start off with all the glory in the world, but this season he's really made up for it and just been getting stronger and stronger and stronger. The whole DPR team have been just improving so much and, you know, really working well together too. So just quickly, if you missed it before, the start of the, the uh, interview there, we'll just run through the championship standings for the chase. So Jason Martin currently leads. Uh, he's 24 points ahead of Edward Foster in second. Joint place with Mick Michael Skurlock there. 24 points down. 25 points down is Hamish Gallagher and Josh Micklemore. 37 points down is Danny G. 40 points off the lead in seventh position is Joshua Carroll Walton. Andrew Dyson himself, 48 off the lead in eighth. Joint in position, that position with Neil Pearson. Luke Traher down in tenth, 50 off the lead and 57 off is Matty Ray. So he's going to hope for a better night tonight. Uh, obviously 11 drivers in the chase this season because we had a tie for p10 yeah, it's uh congested at the top there and once again the um some of the guys in the top have not won a race yet so it's all about consistency and and finishing it was a big change up in the standings uh last week with um neil pearson uh not finishing that race and uh, obviously some damage there to daiso so uh the dpr boys suffered a little bit and uh, that allowed the uh, the Mitch boys to uh, to make up some difference there with, uh, as we said, if you haven't seen it, uh, have a look back through YouTube uh, with uh, Danny G just sneaking into uh, the top three there, just quietly making his way through the uh, through the through the race and uh, coming out in on the uh, on the podium. Yeah, it was a fantastic run from Danny G and just showing that you know he he might be the. The, the least talked about member of the Mitch Motorsport team, but he has absolutely got the talent in that team still. You know, he is very quick and he's always there or thereabouts, as he's proven by getting into the chase. Uh, a few drivers that haven't won a race this season in the Anscar Cup Series. Um, so in the chase, and that's Edward Foster, Hamish Gallagher, surprisingly, uh, and Joshua Carroll Walden with Luke Traher and Matty Raymond as well. Of course, we saw Matty Raymond take a victory in at the Xfinity last night. He's going to hope to try and get a repeat of that at least tonight or next time out at Dega. But a few drivers out there, especially Hamish Gallagher and Foster, you know, you sort of kind of expect them to get a win, at least one win through the season. But it has been so tough this year. A few drivers with multiple wins. Jason Martin with three. Michael Skurlock with five. Andrew Dyson with five. Neil Pearson with four. You know, they've been really strong this season. Josh Micklemore on two wins. You know, it's really between Scurley and Dyson at the moment for who, who's got the most wins. Uh, Neil Pearson's going to try and get another one under his belt so he can get into the five club and see if anybody can get in the sixes this year. Yeah, but as you mentioned, uh, Edward Foster is the defending series champion and uh, he had a very similar run uh, last season, except he was then uh, very, very dominant in the chase. So... Um, it's uh, it's it's still anyone's game, particularly only as this is the fourth uh, race of ten to uh, decide who uh, who takes this out. Very much so. I mean, at the start, it, it looks like it was all DPRs to to lose, really. 
and now it's been a Mitch Motorsport domination for the last two races, but that can change so quickly in motorsport. You just have to have a bad couple of weeks and then all of a sudden it goes all topsy-turvy and you can go from leading at the championship all the way down towards the back end of that pack. Most definitely so. There's uh, only 12 seconds to go here before we will flip over into the dummy grid and get this one ready to go here at Las Vegas for the Cup. We've uh, got a good race coming up. Qualifying extraordinarily close if you've just joined us. Uh, in fact, uh, thousandth between uh, our top drivers, the top five drivers. So we will take you through that grid in just a matter of a moment as uh, we get this one on the screen there it is there so bring up this grid here there is a slight change to it so we have got jason martin on pole with michael skurlock p2 then it's barry neal scott griffiths off the second row We've got hamish gallagher riley curtis off row three with maddie ray and edward foster off row four then it's andrew dyson josh micklemore off five with ben vickers and greg spence off spencer my apologies off row six as we flick over the page, Gary Wellman, Noddy Tompkins off seven, Luke Traher and Steve Williams off eight, with Daniel Hedersheet and Dave Douglas off nine, and it's Aiden Schultz and JCW off ten, with Paul Jackson and Philip Worley off eleven, Phil Otto, Lachlan Urquhart off twelve, and then it is Justin Witcher, Norm Clark off thirteen, with Kate Donnelly, Matty Hunter off fourteen, and rounding out our thirty cars is Danny G and Neil Pearson moving to the back with an end of line penalty from last week. So he will be making his way from the rear of the grid. If you are one of the adoring Riley Curtis fans out there tonight, he's just alerted us to the fact that he has got another new colour scheme on the 93 mobility. You can see it there on the top lane. He uh, probably shouldn't be in chat so much. Be getting on with it. Foster will be cooking in the car behind him there. He won't be happy about that. But uh, Riley gets away. Let's have a quick look at this paint job on the 93. It's on it tonight. Not too quick to see, to be honest. Wow. Very nice dark purple going into a very nice dark blue there for Mr. Riley Curtis. And a fantastic so. painter of cars. Yeah, absolutely he is. So there's a lot of photography and a whole heap of other things as well. As well. So just trying to have a look at the car here. Can't really get a good view of the whole thing. I'm sure we'll get coverage of it throughout the night, Riley, but uh, thanks for letting us know about that one. So kiss of death, Carl. You've been pretty accurate of late. <laughs> oh, look, look, it's hard not to bet on Jason Martin, in all honesty. I mean, it's one-to-one -one odds, isn't it, really? But Jason Martin's been quick. But watch out for Barry Neal behind him as well. Barry's been very quick recently. Of course, Michael Skillop up on the front row. I'm going to put the kiss of death on Scotty Griffiths tonight. If he can uh, hold it together throughout the night, I think he's going to be there or thereabouts at the end of the evening. We can't overlook uh, Neil Pearson as well. Make his way through from the back, but we are about to get going here. It's about to go green. It'll be Jason Martin who leads us away. And he got away to a strong start. And he's opened a gap on Michael Skurlock there. As they go two by two, Skurley and Martin just uh, forming up. But behind them now, Barry Neal, Hamish Gallagher. Drop into that, hold that low line. Matty Ray. Unusual to see him this far up the field this early on. Normally be working his way from the back of the pack. Uh, but uh, he had a good qualifying night tonight, so he'll be looking to push that through. To Andrew Dyson, already up four places, if you don't mind. And uh, in fifth position in the orange skittle. We've got one of the SRM cars just getting a bit squirrely out of turn four. I think it might have been Noddy. Um, good save there, though, because um, that got really, really off. Kelter just got a little bit of a tag from behind, I think, and yeah, he managed to save that one. Uh, so good job on saving that. That's going to drop him back a little bit. Meanwhile, the fight at the front is starting to close up a little bit. The initial start over and done with Hamish Gallagher side by side with Barry Neal at the moment. We've got a flood of orange cars up the front with Neal and Daiso. They're trying to chase down the red and back black bad blood livery. Mitch Myers put off. Hamish Gallagher, Barry Neal managing to slide in front for P3. Meanwhile, Nick, uh, Martin and Scullock are in the lead of this race. So to come back to the pack a little bit as we normally see it happens and get a good jump away, but the uh, 
Lots of Neil Gallagher and Dyson have close up onto the back of them. Edward Foster's just making a move underneath along with Josh Micklemore on Scott Griffiths. So that is uh, a couple of positions changed there. So Foster up two positions now into P6. He's now got to chase down Andrew Dyson, but he has got Josh Micklemore on the outside as they go too wide. Through turn, turn one, turn two, turn two, turn one. Turn two. Turn two. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 remember in oval racing, as turn one and turn two in, in one corner, we, uh, it splits down the middle. Um, there is a really angry pack at the moment behind Foster. With Scotty Griffiths leading that ahead of Matty Ray, Luke, Luke Traher, Ben Vickers, Gary Wellman. Few drivers caught up in that pack at the moment. Uh, I think we got uh, Josh Carroll Walden just towards the rear end, maybe with. Uh, just have a look, see who that was. Um, Justin Witcher there as well. So there are a few cars up in that pack at the moment, just battling it out. So doing a great job. Sorry, Greg Spencer. Uh, sorry, uh, Greg Spence in the 029. Sorry, Witcher is a little bit further behind. So. Yeah, there's a really big angry pack at the moment behind Foster. Meanwhile, Daiso is trying to make a move on Hamish Gallagher. Side by side, they go through the corners and onto the back straight. And it's going to be Daiso trying for that drag race down the front there. Doesn't quite get it made. Hamish Gallagher's got that outside line. That should give him a little bit more corner exit speed off the corner onto the tribal section. You just got to be a little bit careful running that low line for so long here at Las Vegas as well. Although the sun has disappeared and the track temperature has dropped to a nice comfortable 21 degrees Celsius, running that low line does tend to heat up the tyres a little bit more. You put a little bit more friction through them and that can cause you a little bit more problems later in the race. So those guys running the high line at the moment will have a little bit more pace come later on. So they take a little bit of suffering early in the stages, but it does come good to them later on. There's a fairly heavy battle going on at the back here for... Um, no, between Norm Clark and Naughty Tompkins, they're just uh, cutting one another off and having a good old fight for 29th and 30th, so right the way through. Good battle happening. So uh, there's plenty of action still going on at the front. We sort of split now. That uh, angry pack that you spoke about is just catching up now onto the back of uh, Ed Foster. So gaps closed down now, and we've uh, we've got one large long snake. It has uh, started to form. Jason Martin, Michael Skull, Barry Neal still at the head. Yeah, there's a few cars out there. Um, so Wally, uh, Urquio and uh, Norman Clark all have some damage on them. Uh, there was a bit of a checkup at the start. It looks like somebody just could not get away. Uh, we saw uh, we saw Riley Curtis just struggling to get it away a little bit. And a few cars tried to get it away, tried to actually get it started, and Josh, Joshua Carroll Walden sort of got caught up in that as well. He sort of got it underway, had to put on the uh, put on the brakes, and caused a bit of a checkup early on. So there are a few damaged cars out there already, not from a major wreck, but just from a little bit of a checkup at the start. But up the front, we still got some great battling going on. It's Michael Skurlock trying to take on Jason Martin at the moment. Barry Neal behind him, Hamish Gallagher there. Then we have Andrew Dyson, Josh Micklemore, Edward Foster. Scotty Griffiths and Josh Micklemore as he just gets past Scotty Griffiths, Matty Ray and Daniel Hedersheed up there in P10. It's quite a stacked front pack, isn't it? Six now again as they just slightly break away from that group led by Scotty Griffiths behind. Oh, as this uh, gets a little close there with Daiso and Foster. Foster makes a move on the outside. Gets that done. Moves himself up. Another position into P5. Yeah, meanwhile, Hamish Gallagher is trying his best to find a blank space to slide himself into and get past Barry Neal, but he's got Foster all over the back of him, putting him under pressure. There's no love story between those two guys. No, absolutely not. Taylor Swift would uh, write a tragedy about that one. And now we're, we're, we're scraping the back bottom of the barrel of our Taylor Swift launch. <laughs> about as good as it gets from me, Carl. I think I've seen more of her movies than I've heard of her songs, and that's saying something, because I think she's only in one. Foster getting a good run through <laughs> the tribal section now. He's going to get a nice little bit of draft from Barry Neal. He's got underneath Hamish Gallagher, and he's going to try and make this move work. Gallagher still trying to keep on that high line. Foster working that low line pretty hard at the moment. 
So he's got to watch out because he is going to start struggling with those tyres. And you can see he just gets a little bit squirrely there, drops the position. He's going to drop back behind Andrew Dyson possibly now as he just gets at back end, stepping out a little bit. He slides up in front of Dyson there to block him off. Very nice move here from Foster. Very uh, Dyson will have just been sitting there just going, oh, you cheeky bugger. Uh, but very nicely done from Foster. Very nice little slide job up in front of that car. Well done for positioning just for defensive work. Um, and Foster's going to probably try and sit on the high line now just to try and get a little bit of a cooling in those tyres because I think he's heated them up a little bit too much. The view here off the back corner of the 53 Natale Auto Sport entry I've been with Foster. Looking back Meanwhile, there at Tyson. Meanwhile, making a move for the lead. The 350 goes underneath Jason Martin and is trying to get out in front right here. The BMX Bandit is trying to make a move, gets on the apron. That's going to cost him a tiny bit of speed onto this back stretch, and that's going to give Jason Martin that run. Barry Neal might try and get there as well. He can't quite make it work. You can see Martin and Skirley side by side. Skirley just gets a little bit sideways, loses a little bit of traction off the corner. That's going to give Barry Neal the opportunity across the tribal section. Barry Neal should have the run here on Skirley. He's just going to slide down right in front of that car and makes the move for P2. I was in the background there. I heard somebody go around. We've got our first caution of the night. I think that might have been Phil, uh, Phil Otto. Otto. Yeah, uh, potentially there. Let's uh, go so, back and have a look. So, unfortunately, Phil Otto's oh, been... Oh, he's got tagged by Douglas there. Caught, yeah. So, Douglas just got up in the wall, went down into Phil Otto. The one's gone round. Big hit for Phil there. And that is going to be a relatively hard hit to the... Uh, the number one DPR Phoenix Smokers boat sponsored car and that's going to hurt his night a lot and uh, as you said Dave Douglas getting up in the wall as well that's going to cause a bit of damage to that front end of the car not what he needed to have happen no not at all so we're uh, back live here pit or not pit 17 laps in maybe for fuel maybe if you're back in the pack Martin's going to throw the biggest dummy here he can try and throw, you would think. Uh, probably going to come in. Just to touch up the fuel. Fresh tyres, I would say, and get some fuel. Looks we like Foster's going to actually stick it out there. So Foster's decided to stick it out there. So Natari are going to stick it out there. A few drivers keeping it out there. So um, Maddie Raymond sticking it out there with Aidan Schultz, Luke Traher. So a few drivers thinking about a slightly different strategy right here so they've decided to go for a slightly different approach uh we've only done 18, yeah, 18 laps, laps of this race so i mean it is quite early we might see drivers just taking on fuel rather than full tires uh limited sets again tonight cal uh, as always yes as always. um limited sets in the chase series so four sets of tires for the night so three Jeez. sets to change in pit lane. So all the drivers choosing to get a fresh set of boots on. So now those drivers that have pitted will have two sets of tyres left. The rest of the field will have three sets of tyres left. So currently Foster, Hedersheed, Manny Raymond, Dave, uh, Schultz, Traher, Wellman, JCW, Joshua Carroll, Kate Donnelly, Noddy Tompkin all have three sets of tyres left. Whereas everybody else has come in, got a fresh set. So they'll be down to two more sets for the night. So... They will be praying that this goes green for the rest of the night because that's going to be the thing that helps them out. The guys that are sticking it out there will want a caution in probably about another 15, 20 laps. And then they can come in for their pit stop. They'll have, uh, they'll get more fuel on there. They'll be able to go a bit longer later in the race. And they will have nice fresh tyres on and an extra set for the end of the race if there is a caution towards the end of it. I like the strategy of staying out there, to be honest. I think it's too early. It's a long race, 130 laps here. So uh, there's plenty of time left. And uh, that caution there, pretty, uh, came almost out of nothing. Not not a uh, not a glitch as such, but uh, it was a, a pretty low-key incident. Um, so uh, yeah. we haven't... So uh, just just on that incident, so it looked like Dave Douglas just got caught in the back of Philip Wally, just just hacked the back of Wally, who's suffering damage from that first lap, well, from that 
zero lap incident where there was a checkup just before everybody started getting moving. Um, so he just went into the back of Wally, just tagged him slightly, and that pushed him up to the top of the track and spun him around. And Gail's just popped in with an always four, so that's uh, ominous. Uh, always four, unless she's talking about sets of tyres, of course. But uh, if she's talking about cautions, then we've got a few to come. And uh, pluck a racecraft. Con congrats to Barry and Jason last night, 200 laps on two sets. So uh, not entirely That's sure. The average for Jason Martin to do it on two I was, sets. I was going to say, uh, not, not entirely sure what Martin was doing going through two sets, but um, exactly. we uh, we don't allow really that sort of thing over here. Yeah, and uh, Gail's just clarified there four sets. I was going to say four cautions is an ominous call, but that can happen as the pace car comes in. And he's going to be your man, Edward Foster, who's going to lead us away. And he gets away with his teammate, Daniel Hedersheed, by his side. They will be absolutely, I was about to say, down as quick as they can into a pair. And they will try and run away here to get a good race. Yeah, they're going to try and keep it quite tight on that line because they don't want to have too many people... Uh, you, you generally, it, it's pretty tricky to run too wide here at Vegas. It can be done, but generally you want to be running that single line to keep preserving tyres and things like that. So they're going to try and keep it in that single line. You can see JCW, Josh Carroll Walden, trying to work his way up the field as well to get onto the back of his teammates. But Matty Ray is that current driver that's putting pressure on him. He just gets underneath Heather Sheep there, just trying to put a little bit of pressure on him, just trying to spook Daniel Blair. Matty Ray just trying to push himself up there already. He's got Aiden Schultz just behind him as well in the Aussie Esports entry, of course, the kangaroo version, not the, not the, uh, Silver Fern. Fern Lake, yep, thank you. <laughs> three Ray wide now, three there. wide in the background, across the apron, Skirl, he's on the charge, he's on fresh tyres, he's our first man on fresh tyres here, you can see Joshua Carl Warden there getting swallowed up a little bit. Hamish Gallagher there, Luke Traher as well. Traher on old tyres. So Mickey Skirlock, look at him come through here on the fresh rubber. Jason Martin in the background there trying to get through. Scotty Griffiths doing a good job to get out of the way. He'll be, he is on fresh tyres as well. You can see the difference on those fresh tyres now. And this is going to make things a little bit spicy for these guys. So you can see Skelly is on an absolute charge right now. As he's trying to get up to the front, he's just getting past Head of Sheep doing his best to fly up through that and get past him. J uh, Hamish Gallagher on the inside getting past as well. So Gallagher and Skirlock working their way right to the back, right back to the front of the pack. Meanwhile, Jason Martin's got caught out because of uh, transition time in the pit lane. So he's fallen down a little bit and he's struggling to get past a few people. But it is Michael Skirlock that is currently taking advantage of this and really flying through the field. And he's uh, taken back the lead of the race as we've got another caution. We have another caution in the background. Looks like Danny G and Paul Jackson have got involved here. Go it's back and have back a little in. look at Absolutely. that one. I'm just checking one thing out between Skirley. Okay. It looks like Gary oh, Big incident. So, so it here. looks like Scotty Griffiths uh, has actually gone up into um, Paul Jackson. So Scotty Griffiths, it's the start of that incident, just got caught up with Paul Jackson. And then behind him, a cascade of cars getting caught up in that incident, unfortunately. Huge, huge wreck here at Las Vegas. Lots of vehicles involved in that one. Yeah, Naughty Tompkins, Gary Wellman, you can see there, Danny G. 231 entry of Paul Jackson as well. So half a dozen cars involved in that incident. And uh, that's going to allow out those who chose not to pit to uh, do exactly that. Looks like Kate Donnelly might have had an equipment failure. Um, so he might be out of this race early on. Thanks, gone on his car. So... Donnelly having to jump into pit lane, get a tow back as well. So that really, really did go poorly there, unfortunately. And indeed, somebody by Paul Jackson, the pint of luck, has uh, 
He needs it at the moment. That, that was very, very unlucky there, unfortunately. His teammate, Barry Neal, though, uh, might have had all the luck from Paul Jackson tonight because he's currently sitting up there in the third position. Meanwhile, those guys that didn't pit have now come into pit lane. So everybody is now on fresh tyres. This is the kind of thing that those guys were sticking it out for. So they're going to be on much fresher tyres by around about eight laps. So not a huge amount of difference, but they will have eight more laps of fuel on board. So if we get a long green period here, this is going to be very helpful for those drivers. Yeah, interesting. See, um, it's just registered here that Neil Pearson and Roller Curtis have uh, cycled through pit lane again as well. So they've just uh, taken an extra splash of juice. They've uh, done two stops, as has Matty Hunter, Steve Williams, Don Clark and Dave Douglas. They've all been, all been through the lane uh, three times. Uh, twice, I should say. Sorry, twice. So just for fuel... Yeah. Um, just for fuel. Fuel only stops for those guys. So it's um, it, it's just getting that little bit of extra fuel on board. And if we get a long green stint period, that's going to be a uh, play out. crucial one. Yeah. yeah, it can play out. That's it. Particularly for someone like Pearson. He's got to roll the dice a little bit. He started at the rear of the field. Um, and uh, he's actually up into 11th now, even with those two stops. So uh, that's uh, working okay for Neil. And uh, he will be up fighting at the front at the end of this one. You can guarantee it in the... I uh, can't remember what colour Skittle he is, actually, Neil. He's uh, just coming through there. He's in the red Skittle. Yes, the, the, the red Baron himself, Mr. Neil Pearson. Um, <laughs> so he's going to want to try and get his way back up through the field and get a strong finish tonight. And look, that little bit of extra fuel on board could definitely help him out tonight. So that could be... A bit of a difference factor for him. How have so you, um, go on. Uh, I was just going to say, the other thing that's done is it's helped Pearson just rotate himself up a little bit because he would have been quite far down the order still, but just coming in for that little bit of fuel because he had, took fuel only, didn't take tires. Himself and Riley Curtis have come out in 11th and 12th position ahead of Foster, Hedeshi, Schultz, and all of that group. So he's going to be on the same tires as the group in front of him, but he will have a little bit more fuel. Yeah, bought himself some time. Um, let's just say, uh, with uh, without warning, the uh, any uh, facts, quiz, any uh, questions, uh, interesting knowledge about Las Vegas, you can share with us tonight. Uh, not off, not off the top of my head tonight. Oh, no, oh, I actually okay. didn't okay. didn't have anything relatively prepared tonight. So it is a uh, it's a pretty much open at one tonight. Um, I thought I'd be kind to you and to the audience and myself as well. I thought uh, I'll give you some warning there, but that's fine. So, lights are out on the pace car. We'll be heading off again, and it uh, will be Michael Skirlock back at the front. So, he uh, had a really good strong run on the restart. He'll be looking to do the same thing here again. With uh, the lead car on that new tyre being Greg Spencer. I think if my eyes don't deceive me as uh, the highest placed uh, latest stopper so we'll see how he gets on uh, be Edward Foster uh, Foster I there believe. on 115 Spencer came in with the rest of the group so Foster is the first on the fresh tyres so uh, he is just behind Pearson and Riley Curtis so it's going to be Foster Hedishied Schultz Raymond those guys are all on fresh tyres True. Skirley, Gallagher, all on tyres that have done around about 10 laps now. So not a huge amount of laps on those tyres. They'll still have a fair bit of life in them. The right rear will be a little bit worn away, but they should be relatively OK as the pace car is going to pull into pit lane here at Las Vegas. And Michael Skirlock is going to lead us away tonight. Once more as we go green at Las Vegas here on FGM Ecast. Really good start for Skirley. Pulls away nicely from Hamish Gallagher. Just catch them a bit napping. That's given Barry Neal the opportunity to try and make a move if he can. Can't quite make it done on Hamish Gallagher at the moment. Hamish Gallagher just manages to keep that second place position. And it's Neil and Dyson though fighting it out for third at the moment. The Mitch Motorsport boys just uh, forming up behind them as well. They'll be looking to get into a chain where they can without costing themselves too much time. You can see there Barry Neal on the low line. Andrew Dyson on the high. You'd be forgiven for confusing the two. Following on from them, it's Greg Spence, Ben, Vicar, ben Vickers, Neil Pearson and Edward Foster on those fresh tyres. So we'll keep an eye on Foster's progress as he makes his way back up through the field. 
Yeah, of course, the tyre difference isn't going to be as much as we saw earlier on, of course, when Scurley mm. was out there. Um, you know, there, there's a big difference between 20 lap old tyres and 10 lap old tyres. But those guys on the fresh tyres, they should have a little bit of advantage here. They're not going to want to push too hard too quickly, of course. That's going to be the one big thing is if you push too hard too quickly, you can chew those tyres up very uh, very fast and cause yourself some trouble later on in the stint so they're probably just going to be thinking a little bit more in the long run hoping to get a nice long green stint here because that will work out perfectly for them I think the other thing for Foster <laughs> is that he has got header sheet uh, behind him and behind header sheet is Joshua Carroll Walden so it actually could not have worked out any better for the team they're all three there running in the chain they just need to try and close it up with JCW to try and get him involved um, and then they've got themselves a good little pack to get together to work for the remainder of this race. Yeah, they'll be hoping to carry on the uh, tradition of trios for victories of teams in the Cup Series tonight. If they can manage to get all three of their cars in the top three tonight, I'm pretty sure they'd be super happy with that one. But it is not an easy task to do because they've got no. a lot of very, very fast cars to get past to try and get there. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, Edward Foster's now been split away from uh, his teammates, so that hasn't quite played out there as I imagine they probably would want it to. JCW and uh, Daniel Hedersheed still working together, but uh, Foster's checked out a little bit. He's got uh, his adversary, Aiden Schultz, behind him. He uh, loves racing with uh, Schultz almost as much as Ryan Jones, but they always seem to stick together and uh, run the 52 and the 53. Neil Pearson working his way up there as well. Foster just behind Pearson now, who's on a bit of a charge. Remember, Pearson is on those slightly older tyres, but he's got a little bit more fuel on board. So he's got some good pace at the moment, despite being on the same tyres as everybody else. So he is on the he's on some of the older sets of tyres out there, if you can really call 10 laps old on tyres, I guess, in <laughs> qualifying tyres. Uh, meanwhile, Jason Martin is up there in just in front of Barry Neal and Neil Pearson. So... Two Neils are there, Pearson and Barry, and they're trying to work their way past, uh, trying to work their way past Jason Martin at the moment, who is doing a good job of defending at this stage in the 21, trying to catch up to Andrew Dyson, who looks to be just pulling a bit of a gap. Dyson's just managed to break away from Nick, uh, from Jason Martin at the moment. Uh, so he's doing a good job as Philip Wally gets a big moment just going out on the straight there. Uh, he's managed to save the car, but he just had a big moment as he went up into the wall. Luckily, no caution called. It looks like uh, Foster's going to get a good run on uh, the uh, 22. Barry Neal, Aiden Schultz trying to go with him on that low line. Josh Mickleman will box a little bit up the top there. It looks like Daniel Hedersheds are covered well as well, so he's joined on the back here as we continue on with Neil Pearson as he tries to make his way past Jason Martin. This is uh, pretty customary for Martin to just manage his race at about this point in time, so don't be too surprised to see Pierce to make the pass. Uh, but Martin certainly won't be uh, won't be out of this race by any stretch of the imagination. No, Martin sort of it, it, he's almost a bit of a cork in the bottle at the moment. Those fast cars behind him are just sort of stuck in that position at the moment, which is great news for Martin's team at Hamish Gallagher. He's building up a nice bit of a lead over Andrew Dyson, who's just behind him trying to keep on the back of Skirley. There's around about uh, 0.2 of a second lead for Skirley at the moment over Hamish Gallagher. Is it getting up to some lap traffic now with Danny G? As Neil Pearson tries to go out wide, they're going to go free wide here as they get underneath Danny G. Luckily, they catch him on the tribal section, so it's a nice, easy place to pass. But if you caught that going through turns one or two, it would have been a lot harder. Absolutely. So lap 38, 1.30 here. I need time to go at Vegas. And uh, we've had uh, the two cautions thus far. They have just joined us on FGME Cast for the Anscar Cup Series. We're in the chase. And uh, at Vegas here for the fourth instalment. Michael Skirlock, current leader. Just uh, starting to come under some duress from Hamish Gallagher who's just been uh, closing ever so slightly. Daiso is the same. Edward Foster, of course, as soon as we switch away just got underneath uh, Jason Martin there. So that is a change for position as well. Foster on a much uh, a 10 lap newer set of tyres uh, as well. So he has got that small advantage. 
And just behind him, Hedersheed as well. His teammates worked his way up there. Now you can see Barry Neal just falling off a little bit on pace. Might have gone a little bit too hard too soon on those slightly older tyres. And it's just got a little bit, just got a little bit dicey for him. He's just struggling a little bit for pace there. So Foster is managing to work his way through the traffic very well now. And he'll be able to use a few different lines as well. And that's going to be the advantage of those slightly fresher tyres is just using some different lines. Um, just allows you some more option some more options to play with and, sure and you can see just how quickly he's gaining up behind a uh, andrew dyson as you say and schultz now getting past martin and you can see joshua carroll walden trying to make it three wide now as they go into turn number turn number three they decide to stick it to two wide but they're getting past phil otto at the moment otto is going to be on the outside that might block martin slightly martin drops Ooh. down to the inside manages to save that one martin just getting in front of joshua carroll and good control there from all those guys and they're three wide again with otto on that higher line the jcw here is just obviously trying to make sure he keeps up with the team where he can Aiden schultz on his outside at the moment so schultz has uh, suffered a little bit for that uh, that that pass there with the uh the traffic. I think he really wanted to try and go with Daniel Hedersheet uh, as they got past Jason Martin, but uh, just got caught out a little bit there by uh, Phil Otto. Did the right thing. Um, although there is no right thing to do in uh, oval racing. There's no blue flags, of course, but Otto just sticking to that high line to let these guys through, but it just didn't quite work out for Aiden Schultz. No, just got caught back a little bit. You can see Joshua Carroll actually just falling off a little bit too as uh, those guys on the slightly older tyres are just starting to fall back a little bit on pace now. They're starting to struggle a little bit as those guys on the slightly fresher tyres are now catching up. So it looks like that tyre deficit is just starting to play into effect now. So if this race remains green, you've got to say it's looking good for those guys that stop that a little bit later. Of course, the other thing that does is it gives them the opportunity to run a little bit longer just in case there's a late caution. So when everybody comes into pit, they might pit under a green flag conditions and that could cost them a little bit. So we'll see how this race remains running tonight. But at the moment, it is Michael Scullop in the lead in the 350 with the 13 of Hamish Gallagher behind him in third and Andrew Dyson in the 041 orange, orange uh, skittle in third position. The orange DPR flavoured car there with Edward Foster in fifth, Daniel Hedersheed, sorry, in fourth, sorry, Daniel Hedersheed in fifth, and Jason Martin currently in sixth. Foster's got a good run on here on Daiso, so he's going to try and duck down the inside, and Hedersheed's going to try and go with him. Oh, it's Hedersheed just contact there. Just manages to hold it. He's got Jason Martin all over the back of him, so it was close there. Front of the car just lifting on Hedersheed, I'd say, just as they got a little bit of aero wash there and just got a little bit loose up there into Dyson. Just that moment on a speedway like this, you know, it, it's not a super speedway per se, but it is still a very quick track. They're still getting up towards 290, 300 kilometers per hour at some stages in these cars. And the aero on the Cup car is a little bit more than the old Xfinity cars and other vehicles. And you can find sometimes when you're passing somebody, if you get it in a certain spot of the corner all of a sudden the front lifts off a little bit as the uh as, as you sort of get a little bit of that draft come in and you, there's not as much air pressure on the car and all of a sudden it lifts up you get a little bit loose and then it gets a little bit squirrely and can get a little bit scary like it did just then for hey for uh daniel hedersheed and i think hedersheed's just struggling a little bit i've seen him a couple of times just break away a little bit particularly on the gas uh out of the corner he was uh running with foster so just uh, got a little bit of a struggle in the uh, 035 Atari Autosport Race Magazine sponsored entry. Meanwhile, Foster is making a move on Hamish Gallagher up front. One of the things I'd like to say about uh, Daniel Hedersheet, of course, is he is one of the newer drivers to the oval side of things. So, you know, a lot of experience on road racing and in other forms, in other categories as well. But a little bit newer to the NASCAR side of things. So... Uh, again, it's one of those things that's just getting that little bit of extra experience, and we've seen that with somebody like Daiso. It's one, once it all clicks, once it all comes together, it's very hard to beat somebody like that. So next season, he's going to be one of those drivers to watch out for. And let's not forget, he did win on debut. Exactly. It's, so, he's not a slouch at all. He's not a slouch. <laughs> but he, he's, still a, he's still sort of almost classified as a rookie you know that's the thing is you know he's still got a bit to learn in the old oval side of things 
and that's that's always a scary thought when somebody's got stuff to learn on the oval side of things when they can win on debut. Uh, it is just uh, it's just, just got to go. What more can they achieve? Yeah, with Daniel get a shake. Amazing to me how similar all the drivers look. He's just got loose again there. Just the back of it just broke away on him. You just see there the steering wheel work going in to just try and keep the 035 planted on all fours. It's a lot of work that goes into turning a car left. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's one of the things we say about <laughs> over racing. You know, you, you are turning left technically, but you're also having to turn that wheel right. You're also turning it, it left. You, you're constantly working it, constantly working. trying to get yeah. it in the right spot. And it is a very tricky skill to learn. It's something that's not easy to do. And lap after lap after lap, it gets even harder because the cars change the way they move. The track conditions change. The temperature changes, and it just changes the way it feels. And uh, I think I said it at Talladega last night. It's a bit like driving it in the rain, you know, you're sort of, you, you've also always like it's a constant change in condition. You don't know what you're going to get lap after lap. It always feels like something new out there. But Foster on an absolute charge at the moment. He is getting right up behind Michael Skirlock. Just got past Hamish Gallagher as well. So he is putting on the pressure and Foster, I think, is very much uh, on a charge at the moment while Michael Skirlock is just trying to save a little bit more. So he's lifting off a little bit more in the corners. He's just... Uh, just letting the, the engine breathe a little bit more than Foster uh, while uh, just just as his tyres start to wear a little bit as that stint goes on as he knows he needs to try and make that fuel last a little bit longer uh, because they all want to make it so they can make it to one more stop in this race at the moment none of them can do that they need to make it another about another 10 to 12 well, 10 to 14 laps and then they can make it home on another ta on single tank of fuel so that's the big thing for these guys is they've got to think about getting to the end it, it's uh it, it's a hard thing to do as a racing driver to let somebody pass you you always want to be in front but sometimes being in front is not the best place to be on for fuel mileage no, absolutely not we saw that last night at talladega so Plenty to still play out here, but it is Michael Skurlock in the lead of the race. Uh, Edward Foster closing in on him. And uh, it may just uh, may just jog on the spot for a little bit. As, uh, Aiden Schultz just makes a, a couple of positions there as well. I going to say, if you say it's jogging on the spot, just look back behind Aiden Schultz at the moment because you've got uh, the Pirate King, Josh Micklemore, fighting out with Neil Pearson. Uh, Joshua Carroll and Barry Neal, Mark, Jason Martin, Maddie Raymond there as well. Maddie Ray, of course, is just keeping it sat there. He's not pushing too hard. Maddie Ray on those slightly fresher tyres too. So he's just sitting back there, just just waiting patiently. Maddie Ray, uh, he's doing a bit of a vulture impression, and just waiting to pick the carcass of anything that happens in front of him, and uh, just waiting patiently for that to happen. And you can see he's just getting a really good run on Jason Martin at the moment, who is falling back at what you've got to say is a vast rate of knots for Jason Martin. Uh, Martin already jumping back nine positions uh, as he's fighting it out with Barry Neal. So those front runners earlier on are struggling at the moment. Uh, and those guys that came in for that early pit stop are sort of struggling as well. Although Hamish Gallagher, Michael Skurlock and Andrew Dyson are making a good job of it. I was about to say, um, those are... Uh three of the four front runners on old tyres so Daniel Hedersheed, Aidan Schultz and uh, Neil Pearson on fresher rubber so uh, yeah, a fair old uh, handful of it for those guys doing a good job so we're trying to get to critical lap here and about lap 70 or so 65 to 70 yeah, sorry go on so Neil Pearson having a good run at the moment. He's just got past Adrian Schultz. So 24 positions gained for Pearson. So he is having a good return to form tonight and just working his way up through the field, having to start from the back of the pack has not affected him in the least tonight. He is absolutely running his way, charging his way through the field. A little bit of that was helped due to the incidents and the pit stops. But uh, remember, he is on those older tyres still as well, and he's making them work at the moment. So Pearson is getting those older tyres working for him quite well. Let's say you've got to be there to take advantage of it, and uh, he'd already made some progress that helped. That's 
got a bit of a move going on between Daiso and Hedersheed as well. Dyson and Hedersheed side by side as they go down the back straight. Hedersheed getting a nice run into turn number three. Gets it through almost like snatching candy from a baby there for Hedersheed <laughs> on Andrew Dyson. But Dyson is having none of it. He's coming back at him across the trival. They're going to be Ooh. side by side. There's a little bit of contact. A little bit of door by side door contact and again. Oh, big contact. contact once more. There's a little bit of payback contact there it looks like so drivers just doing a bit more rubbing than they want to head getting a little bit heavy into the wall there and just getting a big bang that's going to drop him back towards his teammate of joshua carroll walden andrew dyson just getting a little bit frustrated there with that little bit of rubbing and uh yeah a little little bit of a a little bit of aggression there shown between the drivers. Josh Micklemore just getting a little bit loose out the corner as that car dropped back. Looked like it just took the air off the front of Micklemore's car. He managed to save it and keep it going. Uh, but the blood will be boiling between those two boys now, so you just got to be careful. Yeah, there's not a damage is too bad on uh, the side of Hedersheed of there, but uh, of course no damage is always better than some, so... And with that little bit of fighting, it's just helped the lead free just break loose a little bit. So currently Scurly, Foster and Gallagher have just managed to break away from the rest of the pack now. They've got a nice little bit of a lead of around about a second over Andrew, Andrew Dyson. Um, so they're, they're managing to have a good run at the moment and just get, 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 get a little bit, of a, uh, little bit of a launch over the rest of that pack. Look at this Scurly now coming under pressure as well. Dyson's got pressure on him as well, but it is his teammate, Neil Pearson, who is applying that pressure. So they'll be working to get Aiden Schultz running with him. Schultz is doing all right so far. Head of Sheed there is just struggling a bit with Josh Micklemore in the background, coming up behind him. Josh Carroll Walden trying to help out where he can, as teammates do. They'll not be able to do anything about it there, Joshua Carroll Walden, as uh, Josh Micklemore gets the move done, moves up another position into P7. Just get that feeling that we might see a caution in the next two Ooh, or three yes. laps. It's just it, you just get that feeling in the air at the moment. Drivers are getting a little bit more racy as the tyres are starting to drop off a little bit, and a few people's uh, danders are up as well. They're just a little bit, a little bit on edge, um, a little bit like a cat. You know, when, when you scare a cat, all of a sudden the hackles come up, and uh, it's just it's just happening at the moment. And you just get that feeling that we might see something happen on track. We might see a yellow flag appear anytime soon. Well, if we do, pit lane will be a frantic place. And that's where mistakes can happen as well. So, seen it before plenty of times where drivers in a full pit lane and miss their pit box. So, will that have a factor or play a factor in the outcome of the race tonight? Time will tell. That's the case. So, as uh, Neil Pearson and uh, Andrew Dyson, uh, sorry, and uh, Aiden Schultz still fighting away now. Schultz on the outside. So that damage has definitely affected Daniel Hedersheet as he's uh, dropped back now to 12th position. And uh, Joshua Carroll Walden now ducks underneath Neil Pearson. So just not quite able just with jumping the to there. the front, Stuart. We've got Foster getting a great run on Michael Scurlock, the 53, just going underneath the 350 and getting the position for the lead of the race. And Scurley is just going to slide, try and slide in behind Foster, I'd say, relatively shortly and uh, just get position, but Scurley's still wanting to race down the straight, so they're still side by side. Those two absolutely going for it as it stands, going into the corner so close between them. Well, just, you know, barely an arm's length between those two cars at the moment, travelling at 270, 280 kilometres per hour. Very nice moving there. You can see Hamish Gallagher's trying to take advantage of that as well. Hamish Gallagher now on the move. He's going to see if he can make that one on Foster. Uh, as Scurley manages to block off the passing attempt. He got it done, just uh, not able to hold it out. So, slicing at the front continues. We're now getting close. There'll be some drivers, not quite yet, but there'll be some drivers will be starting to get a little bit nervous, probably thinking about fuel numbers. Yeah, when so they've got to roll the dice. I'd say Scurlock's probably the biggest one at risk right now. Uh, so Michael Scurlock's going to be the driver that is going to be struggling for fuel. He'll probably be able to make it to around about lap 50, 
57.58, I'd say. Uh, but he has been out there for a long time. So he might be struggling a little bit for the old field numbers as it gets towards the end of the stint, as he's been out in the lead quite a while. Of course, Hamish Gallagher, he's been out there for 51 laps as well. So himself and Andrew Dyson, Barry Neal, Josh Micklemore, and Jason Martin will all have to come in about 10 laps before the rest of the field around them. And remember that Neil Pearson did take on extra fuel as well. So albeit his tyres, same age as those that he's playing with, he does have more fuel on board. Right, Lord, are you, Carl's just asked if we can uh, get an update in the chase points, Mr. Start of the Broadcast there. Have you got those handy still? Yeah, so Jason Martin leads 24 points over Foster and Skurlock as... Barry Neal just gets a little bit of contact with Joshua Carroll Walden there. They just get very close as he gets up into Josh Micklemore, sorry. So Barry Neal just gets up into Josh Micklemore there, coming out of turn three. Just gets up into Micklemore. That's pushed Micklemore into the wall. Almost a big accident there. They've managed to save it. That was very close there indeed. Uh, but Skerlock and Foster equal on points at the moment behind Jason Martin, 24 down. Then it's Hamish Gallagher, who's in third, 25 points off the lead. Joint place with Josh Micklemore. Then it's Danny Geech, 37 points off the lead. Uh, so that's the top area of the chase at the moment. We'll run through the rest of the order a little bit later. Thank you, Carl, for that one. So Schultz now, benefactor there. He's got to in front of Dyson and Pearson, so... He uh, is currently up 15 into fourth, so a strong performance here from Schultz. Just grabs the apron there a little bit. It's seen him a little bit higher than he would have liked to have been, and that's allowed Andrew Dyson to get a run down underneath him now as well. So Dyson's going to get that position back. Pearson's going to go with him. So that's a change there, two positions. Just so you can see how critical it is. Just that tiny little touch of the apron there, and that drops Schultz to two spots. So he's got some pace in that. 52 entry at the moment, so he will keep battling. He's got JCW right behind him. Barry Newell, Jason Martin, Matty Ray not too far off the back of this pack either. Going to have drivers thinking about those green flag pit stops very shortly in the next, probably about the next two to three laps, I'd say, if they can make it that far. Um, so they're going to be thinking about it very soon because, of course, you're going to get out on those fresh tyres and that's going to help you out a little bit and then that will cause the undercut to become a thing. One of the things you need to come out into, though, is traffic. You want to come out, uh, unlike uh, some motorsport, you want to come out in traffic, so you want to come out behind cars so you can actually get a bit of that draft action, so you're not out there on your own, uh, running all on your lonesome, and you're able to take advantage of the car in front of you just to give you a little bit of extra speed down the straights, of course. If you come out solo, then it's going to affect you quite a lot. Uh, but... Somebody like Scullop and Gallagher, they're going to have to be thinking about pitting relatively shortly. They're not going to have much more fuel left in that car as somebody flings a cone up onto the track. Um, I just said that. I thought I was like, oh, there's a plastic bag blowing across the track. That's, uh, that's new. <laughs> iRacing's newest feature, plastic bags. Um, <laughs> yes, somebody flicking one of the famous blue cones up on the track. And uh, luckily it didn't get caught underneath Scurley's car because uh, that's something that can happen in iRacing is you can get cones caught underneath cars yes. and that can cause problems. Um, it's happened to me in a and Skip mate. Arbor before. <laughs> Where is Mark S? I'm assuming by that you're about referring to Mark Scaife. Night Lord, who uh, famously ran around with plastic bags, shoved into the front of the Commodore. Oh, actually, you're talking about... Yeah, no, you might... Yeah, it would be my scaf. Oh, it's very late, Carl, on a Thursday night for me. It's been a long, long week. Just thinking, hey, I'm... Is he talking about Mark Skurlock? Who's Mark Skurlock? Shoot, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> Bloody hell, what am I doing? Anyway, back to racing. Josh Micklemore in pit lane. So Micklemore is the first to blink on pit lane. 58 laps out on that fuel load and he's come in so he's going to come out with fresh tyres soon. Micklemore is running down there in about 15th position so he's decided to pit now and he is the first to take that risk. He's going to come out on fresh tyres though so he should have a bit more pace. So we'll see how this one rolls for the Pirate King Josh Micklemore. We'll see how this one works out for him. Um, of course we call him that because he's uh, I think I think back to full binocular vision now he's no longer mono vision uh, after a bee sting last week uh, just underneath the eye causing him to be able to only able to be seen out of one eye so uh, uh, he, he did well just despite that still um, and we'll see if he can carry up the good form with two eyes rather than one 
Yeah, he's a uh, Mickey Skurlock. Just continues to run at the front here. As uh, Daniel Hedishead and Barry Neal have jumped into pit lane. But they've also taken the plunge. Yeah, so Hedishead pitted uh, with Foster, of course. So Hedishead's coming in a little bit earlier than expected. So he's coming in to try and get strategic advantage on those fresh tyres. Uh, so we're going to see the leaders try and stick it out for a bit longer. Skurly must be getting close to that, uh, that running on vapours at the moment. So he's going to be really, really close to pitting in. And I'd probably say he would see himself and Hamish Gallagher probably peel into the pits in the next lap or so. And I think we might be seeing Skurly. Yeah, so it looks like Skurly's a bit to get in now. And Foster's going to join him as well. Oh, yeah. Now as well. Gets that Breaking up. away there. Yeah. Might be a pass in pit lane here. He's uh, able to get it done. Puts Neil Pearson into the lead of this race, but Skurlock, Foster, Gallagher, Dyson, Robbie Curtis, Norm Clark now into pit lane. So we'll see how this plays out for them. But it is going to be Neil Pearson into the lead from the rear of the grid. He's done Larry Perkins. He's done the last to first. Still going to make a stop, of course. Does have the fuel to carry on for a little bit, so he might be able to benefit from a green flag caution. Uh, from a green flag caution. From a caution period rather than a green flag pit stop. Yeah, the, the famous green flag cautions, of course. Yes, um, happen yeah. all the time. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's something we introduced this season. Um, <laughs> okay, so that group of cars can go for a little bit longer. So they're, they're in a decent train at the moment as well. So they're going to try and go a little bit longer just in case there is that caution. Of course, cars coming out on fresh tyres means they are out on cold tyres. As Pearson does come in this lap, actually. So that's going to give Aiden Schultz the lead of the race. And you'll get that bonus point for that one as well. Um, but you have to remember, cars coming out, they don't have tyre blankets, they don't have tyre warmers. So they are going to be on cold tyres. And that means that you might see somebody make a mistake on the exit. And sometimes you see a car having a little error and then that yellow will fly. And that will help out those guys that have stayed out that little bit longer. Yeah, so the advantage will. gained from step, from those fresh tyres, just to let you know, um, Daniel Hedersheed has managed to jump Foster. So... Uh, Hedishi getting those fresh tyres at those few laps early it has paid off for him because he's managed to get ahead of his teammate Edward Foster yeah, even with that damage Aiden Schultz now comes into pit lane so it's Joshua Carroll Walden at the front you can see him there just uh, behind Daniel Hedishi who's currently running at 6th so that's where it's at but yeah Hedishi the uh, leader effective leader once everyone runs through their pit stops. And Foster did jump Skurlock in that pit stop yeah. as well. So, uh, good stop for Foster. Now, Maddie Ray is making a move on JCW. So, Maddie Ray is going to try and get for the lead of the race on Merritt. He's going to try and make the overtake here. As you can see, Foster's trying to get his lap back as well. Foster currently a lap down. So, he's going to come cruising past. Flies past uh, flies past Maddie Ray and JCW. So those guys on the fresh tyres absolutely sailing by. You can see the difference of fresh tyres on the old tyres. But those guys like JCW and Maddie Ray are going to stick it out as long as they can now. Try and go for that a little bit longer. It's all so close there for Skurley on JCW. Skurley and JCW just getting very close as Skurley was just, uh, just pinched a little bit towards the bottom of the line as JCW was trying to defend against Maddie Ray, leader of the race at the moment. And I think JCW has actually wanted to try and get into pit lane as well. He's sort of almost trying to get into pit lane, but he can't because there's too many cars passing him right now as Maddie Ray once again tries to make a pass for the lead of this race on the inside. They're side by side at the moment. Maddie Ray and JCW, they're fighting it out for the lead of the race. They've got a decent advantage over... Uh, Stephen Williams, who is the car that's just behind him, who hasn't stopped as well. So three cars out there that haven't stopped at the moment. Currently, 
Foster is the effective race leader if we go off pit stops, but it is Maddie Ray and Joshua Carroll Walton battling it out for position as Jason Martin and Andrew Dyson are coming through now. They've got to try and get past these two battling cars, and these cars are battling for the lead of the race as they go forward. Dyson in the middle! Dyson threading the eye of the needle there between JCW and Maddie Raymond. That was a... That was a... Uh, very, very brave move. Spectacular. Unbelievable. Just chuck it through. Just just come on through. Come on down. As you see, Daniel Hedishu jump into pit lane as well. Oh, goodness me. They don't do four, they don't do four wide at Vegas. <laughs> I, I, I'm Three wide. Cu curious to see why Hedishu's stopping. Um, so maybe an issue for Hedishu or something because he's stopped recently so yeah could it be a, dri a, a drive-through no he's he's stopping so he's and actually stopping stopping so uh yeah not sure there so maybe just getting some repairs done jcw and stevie dub come in as well so that is everybody in for the pit stops 42 laps remaining here at vegas and that is going to mean that foster is going to be the effective leader of the race so he's going to have Skurlock trying to chase him down. Barry Neal in third position with Hamish Gallagher in fourth. Fifth is Jason Marston. Sixth for Andrew Dyson. So the battle is really starting to heat up here in the Nevada desert of Las Vegas. Oh my word. What, what driving that was. That's uh, on a replay for sure. The end of this one. But uh, good strategy from Foster in pit lane. Closed up well on Skurlock. Got in nice and quick and managed to get the flip done on him in the lane. So these two can obviously run to the end from here. Still got a set of tyres up their sleeves too. So um, they it does go to that uh, finish at the end. They will uh, have the opportunity if they wanted to put on some more fresh tyres. So... I don't want to do that too late if there is a caution, however. So this is going to make for an interesting finish now. We've got Andrew Dyson here, just uh, up on the back of Jason Martin, Hamish Gallagher. So they're they're coming together. Barry Neal, Michael Skullock, Edward Foster. Yeah, Foster just absolutely having a, a, a good run out there tonight but he's got to watch out for Scurley we've seen Scurlock has got the speed tonight and he is really trying to put the pressure on at the moment and just sitting there nicely and just behind him you can see the battle for P3 and 4 between Barry Neal and Hamish Gallagher at the moment those two are very much battling for position very close to each other as well Hamish Gallagher trying his best to get past Barry Neal of course and seeing what he can do in this race Gallagher not had the best result last time out, which affected him a little bit, but he's going to try and get a good run here, as you can see, side <laughs> by side. The bad blood livery, That's 13 of Hamish Gallagher, just sliding his way past the Aotora car of Barry Neal, the Aotora racing car of Barry Neal. You just see Hamish Gallagher's go by there, and all of a sudden, Tay Tay giving you just the evil eyeball on the way through. <laughs> Uh, if, if there's something to stop you turning in on somebody and seeing Taylor Swift inside of you, you just go, wait, is that Taylor Swift? And, and then all of a sudden, you, you don't realise well, that's what's happening and Hamish Gallagher's got past you. The psychological games of Hamish Gallagher continues. Uh, the simple things that have used me late on a Thursday evening. Is that pass on here, Schultz and Riley Curtis. This is battle take... for position. I'd say a driver to keep a look out for now is going to be Matty Raymond. Um, Matty Ray and Joshua Carroll Walden as well, actually. So those two are on much fresher tyres and they could be in for a good charge to the end of this race. So they'll see what they can do uh, with this one. They'll see if they can pull anything out the bag. But Matty Ray might be in for a good finish here tonight. He might not have started out the back of the grid but he could still be up for a good finish tonight. We've got 35 laps remaining here. Yeah, the key for him is going to be closing down Josh Micklemore because at the moment he's running by himself. Micklemore running with Traher, so... able to... Uh, sorry, Micklemore uh, in isolation from Traher, but Traher running with Riley Curtis 
and Aiden Schultz. So uh, they've got a little bit of work to do to catch up to the back of the uh, way down 43 entry of Luke Trahert. Or was there uh, some issue in the background there I just heard whether there's a motor going or uh, I think Dave Douglas maybe might have had an issue in pit lane. Back up the front there with our leader, Edward Foster. He's got Michael Skirlock in pursuit. See there, Hamish Gallagher, Barry Neal, Jason Martin, as the rest come through. That's what we like his chances from here. 33 to go. He's fueled up, tied to the end. So, can run this one out. Take his first win in the chase. Yeah, it sounds, looks like Dave Douglas lost his motor on that one. Looks like his engine decided to, to let go on him. So that's Dave Douglas out of this race, unfortunately. Well, one night you're the hero, the next night you're the victim. That is motorsports. It's uh, it's it's a cruel mistress cruel sometimes. Mistress. <laughs> that's exactly where my mind went. What a, a cruel, foul, temptress motorsport can be. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things about motorsport is when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it is very, very bad. Really, really bad. Just that. A bit of a holding pattern now. But lost the skill of Gallagher, so there's a step trundling around. Making sure they're in position for the uh, rest of this one. Fair bit of camera shake there, sorry about that. If uh, anyone feels a bit seasick. Let's see if we can make the audience vomit. There's a there's something we can do. New um, challenge. Yeah, that's it. The uh, vomit challenge. Uh, I think Danny G's night might be over as well. I think his engine has let go too of the 24. So he's just trying to slink it into pit lane. But that car looks like it is not doing anything else tonight, unfortunately. I think his night is over and done with. Yeah, of course, uh, had a fair bit of damage at the start there. And yeah, she goes into the back of the paddock. So Maddy Raymond has managed to make his way past Josh Micklemore. He's now trying to catch up to Riley Curtis. Um, so he's closing in relatively, relatively decent rate on Riley Curtis. So Maddy Ray uh, just working his way up the field at the moment on those bit of a fresher tyres. So he should find his way up there pretty quickly. Um, so as I said, there's going to be one to keep an eye out for is Maddy Ray and JCW. Those two are going to be working their way through the field on those nice fresh sets of tyres almost about 10 laps younger than the rest of the field. So that little bit of pain staying out longer, helping them out for this end of the race. Meanwhile, up at the front, Foster is still ahead of Skurlock at the moment, who's still ahead of Hamish Gallagher, who's still ahead of Barry Neal, who's still ahead of Jason Martin. But Jason Martin is only just still ahead of the Skittles, the orange and red Skittles of DPR cars, Andrew Dyson and Neil Pearson. Those two are breathing down Martin's neck at the moment and putting all the pressure they can onto the Mitch Motorsport number 21. Yeah, a little bit of a separation for the Mitch team. So, Pearson's had a, a strong drive, so he's now up with Andrew Dyson. And uh, they'll be wanting to get this move done. Head on up towards Barry Neal as quickly as they can. 103 through of 130, so we're starting to run out of laps. Yeah, 27 remaining tonight, so we're getting to the tail end of the race as Matty Ray just gets past Luke Traher. So Matty Ray just moving his way up relatively swiftly. He, he, as I said last time I said it, he was trying to get past Riley Curtis and then he's past Luke Traher next time I check. So he's past two cars. Uh, next up on the list is um, Aiden Schultz. So he's going to try and catch up to Schultz. See there? A little bit of a gap there. And then it's a big gap towards Neil Pearson, Andrew Dyson and Jason Martin. So that might be a bit of a hard one to tackle. Uh, that might be a bit of a high cliff to climb, but he will try his best, I'm sure. But Matty Ray working his way up the field nicely. Yep. So you'd have to think, 
don't know, would he be wanting a caution? Close the pack up for him. And you get everyone getting fresh tyres and a sprint to the end. Or do you want to just be Wait. banking the points here? Or be end up finishing with, you know, a solid eighth position, maybe seventh. Look, it's his current pace. I mean, you got to say he's probably going to end up in at least P8. So he's, he's going to have P8 locked out for him. So championship wise, that, that's decent. You know, that's a nice points haul. Unfortunately, he's got a lot of his contenders ahead of him. So he's got Pearson, Dyson, Martin, Gallagher, Skurlock and Foster ahead of him. So he needs to be ahead of those guys. So he'll want to have a caution in all honesty so he can try and actually get past some of those drivers. And preferably, he'll want it so that all of those cars at the front wreck out, end up towards the back of the grid, and he can uh, he can sneak his way through for a victory and gain a nice haul of points. And while they don't, um, we've seen stranger things happen, um, but uh, that kind of thing probably not going to happen tonight. In all honesty, no, it's, um, a, it's a little bit of a stretch by the second. That's but, it. You know, and he needs to uh, stand in the corner with one shoe on, on and he's on top of his head. Well, he rubs his stomach gandy clockwise and hops. If he does all of that, there's every chance he'll get P1. He might get a Bradbury finish as they all crash across the line and he just sneaks through and gets the victory. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's probably unlikely. Um, but still, it's going to be a solid result tonight. And um, that, that will be an absolutely solid top of a top 10 finish for him, which is what you want to have. You just want that consistency of top 10 finishes, really. And uh, yeah, he'll soon be catching up to Aiden Schultz, I'll say. Um, at least before the end of the race. So Schultz, he's just got to keep his eye on the mirror because he's got a fast-charging Matty Raymond behind him. As the DPR boys of Dyson and Pearson are just getting a little bit impatient now as they're sitting behind Jason Martin. They're trying the way, trying to find a way past that purple Mitch Motorsport car, trying their best to do it and trying to think of a way, a plan of attack really now because that's their only option. They've got to think of a bit of an attack pattern here for him because Martin is just positioning that car perfectly to stop the drivers getting past. Yeah, well, they're still going to have to work. Martin, obviously, uh, there's uh, a fair amount of experience in those three cars uh, as, as far as uh, racing goes. So Martin won't be any pushover to get through here, and that's probably why they're finding it a little difficult Dyson and Pearson to make the move. This will also help Matty Ray out a little. It's a stretch, but every little bit helps. He's now within a second of Aiden Schultz. But, uh, it's closed up a little bit at the front as well, and uh, it's also opened up, so uh, Skirley and Foster have built a two-second gap over third place Hamish Gallagher at the moment um, but Gallagher now falling back into the clutches of Barry Neal Dyson's it? making a move you just see that in the static camera Dyson's just got down the inside of Jason Martin the 041 on the 21 making a bit of a move here he's going to try and take that tie to line his teammate sitting behind him at the moment probably going to see uh, probably going to see Neil Pearson try and uh, possibly I sit up a little bit higher as they go free wide across the line getting past uh, Paul Jackson there but I, I'm surprised to see Neil Pearson sort of dropping on that lower line a little bit I, I was sort of thinking he might try and do a, a sort of a separate attack on Jason Martin to try and make him defend two lines at once and sort of put him out of position a little bit and I think that might be what they're thinking now you can see Neil Pearson just coming up the road a little bit just getting onto the back of Jason Martin you can see guys are getting a good run off the corner now and he's got a good little bit of slipstream from the cars in front of him as well this is going to give him the opportunity to get past Jason Martin Andrew Dyson makes the move and Neil Pearson's going to follow him past Jason Martin is going to possibly lose two positions he's going to do his best to find away from it try and stop it from happening as they get up to a big group of cars that are a lap down at the moment which are helping out those guys just get a little bit of extra toe um, but the battle is furious between these drivers yeah just uh, good. got it done there Daiso has he got enough time left he's got a second gap between himself and Barry Neal and uh, it's still close we're having a quick look there at Gallagher and Neil, you can see the Gallagher and Neil just come through on the bottom of the screen. So it's uh, closing up between these 
drivers fighting out for P3. And Gallagher, Neil Dyson and Martin Pearson on the back of that pack as well. So uh, as it stands as well, things are uh, still happening here for Matty Ray. Closed up on the back of Aiden Schultz now within half a second of Schultzy. So imagine you'd see uh, some challenge starting for that one in uh, the next lap or two. And there's still that battle up at the front as well. Foster doing his best to defend against Michael Scurlock, just trying to keep him off the back of the Atari Autosport car. The 53 is doing a good job of defending at the moment. Scurly can't quite get a move done. He's getting a couple of nice little slip streams, a couple of nice little drafts, and sort of having a little half think about things. Uh, but at the moment, he's just happy enough sitting behind Foster, but we might see him try and make a move at the end of the race. He's sort of shaping up at the moment by the looks of things. Yeah, so 15 left. I've got pretty quick tonight, Carl. What end to That's go indeed. now. We expected there to be a few more cautions, but the pack's spread out now, so... Just, uh, leaders have just gone past Norm Clark and the two fat blokes entry. Norman Clark up 11 positions at the moment, P15. Uh, so good run from Norman Clark starting 26th. Uh, so up to P15 for himself. He's the first car a lap down at the moment. So if a caution does come out, he'll get himself back on the lead lap, which will be comforting for him, I'm sure. Uh, but at the moment, you can see Foster is still just having to keep his defence on uh, Skirley at the moment. And that battle between Neil Pearson and Jason Martin isn't over as well. As Jason Martin is trying to get his move done back on Neil Pearson as well. So that fight still hasn't stopped yet. Uh, so we've still got some good battles out on the track. And uh, there's also the one shaping up between Aidan Schultz and Maddie Ray as well. That one will be getting very close in the next lap or two as well so there's a few to keep an eye on at the moment it's uh it's, it's just knowing which one to pick at the right time absolutely even uh, a little bit further back jcw and stevie dub in the green skittle they're battling away this is for p13 and 12 or 12 and 13 depending on your preference I'm going to say Steve Dub looks like he's got a little bit more speed in mm. that car, uh, a little bit less damage on the 98 of Stevie Williams as well. But JCW doing a really nice job of defending at the moment, just putting that car in a perfect position. Meanwhile, Maddie Ray is all over the back of Maddie of uh, Aiden Schultz right now, and all over the back of uh, of, of Neil Pearson is Jason Martin. So there are, there are two big battles going on at the moment. The big, the closest one is going to be. Pearson and Martin as Martin gets a good run off the corner gets much lower than Pearson getting across the tribal section there cigarette paper between those two cars you could not even fit it there but Jason Martin is going to try for that inside line a little bit of later lift off there Pearson on the outside Martin on the inside they get so close through the corner Pearson will get a better run off the corner exit though and keeps that position for now Uh, Schultz and Matty Ray now have their battle. Looks like Matty Ray is just looking for the right way to get it done here. He's got the pace on Schultz. Schultz on tyres are five laps older, but uh, that's enough. Just grabs the apron a little bit there, so maybe susceptible here to a pass. Yeah, Maddie Ray just trying to shape it up at the moment, just trying to get that one working. And you've got to say, Raymond looks to have the speed over Schultz at the moment. Um, but Schultz has been positioning that car very well. Uh, currently, Maddie Ray is one of the fastest cars on the track, so he's definitely got some good pace on him. Will Schultz be able to make this move work as they come up to some lapped cars as well? So they're getting up to some traffic as well as these things go. And look at the speed off the corner for Maddie Ray. Gets a great launch off the corner there. Gets a slingshot in there. He's going to slingshot underneath Aiden Schultz and slide up in front of him. Nice positioning for Maddie Ray. Just has to keep that car nice and solid there. But that looks like pass 
done there for Maddie Raymond. Stevie Dub doing a similar thing to Joshua Carroll Walden. Those two are side by side at the moment, getting out of turn number four. It is JCW and Stephen Williams side by side across the line, trying to see who can get that position made. They're going to get in there, make contact, slight contact between the two. JCW just lifts off and it is Stevie Dub just getting in front there. Meanwhile, up the front, Foster is keeping Skurlock off the back of him. Double D just dropped in and said engine damage from the first incident. Not happy with the uh, car, cup cars and the dodgy physics. Strong result last night, Double D. Had a decent week, mate. So be meanwhile, worse. sorry, meanwhile, uh, Daiso has made a move on Barry Neal as well. So the battle of orange flavoured cars is getting on as well. And Daiso just getting past Barry Neal up into P4. Now, does he have the pace to catch up to Hamish Gallagher? We've got four laps remaining here. But Dyson's on a bit of a charge at the moment. He might just have the pace to get it up there in the top three. Continues this battle at the front. Two tenths in it. Skilly on Foster. I say it's looked pretty stable throughout the second half of this race. So is Skilly. So it's going to come down to whether he's got enough to do. Double you're always welcome to come back into the uh, cup commentary team, mate. You're always welcome. Scurley just getting a good run on Foster here. So the battle for the lead is on with three of the three laps remaining. Foster is going to have to defend against a fast charging Skurlock right now. Not an easy thing to do, but if anyone can do it, it is Foster. Those two are going to be battling very hard at the moment at the front. Uh, meanwhile, a little bit further back, Hamish Gallagher has got a hard job of keeping Dyson and Neil off him as well. Uh, with the pass of the position of uh, Andrew Dyson, he's got Barry Neal all over the back of him right now. So those cars are very close together as Daiso gets underneath Hamish Gallagher and he's going to try and make the move. Gallagher just cuts across on the triangle just to block him off a little bit. Nice bit of defensive driving there from Gallagher. Daiso really trying his best at the moment to get the move done there side by side. Getting so close on the exit of the corner there. Barry Neal with a good run too. And that's oh. going to block Dyson off. It's going to get so close between those three cars right now. Real close racing between those boys at the moment. Nothing between them. As Foster's going to get the white flag. But he's still in front of Michael Skurlock. So Foster has still got that position as it stands. The big one to keep an eye out for is the battle for third. Uh, keeping an eye on the sort of two different areas at the moment. Skurlock doing a good run this time round. Skurlock's going to try for that last dash charge if he can. He gets a great run around the top there. Michael Skurlock trying for that high line. Not going to make it. He goes into the wall. Skurlock tries for it. Doesn't quite make it work there. As Foster is going to cross the line in P1. Foster takes the victory just ahead of Hamish Gallagher. And Andrew Dyson, Barry Neal in fifth position. Great try there from Skurley at the end. He tried his best but could not quite make it work. Foster taking his first victory this season in the Cup. It's definitely worth the push. He wasn't going to lose unless he had a big lose. He wasn't going to lose second place but uh, could have taken out the win. So definitely worth the push there for Skurley. But a great result there for Edward Foster. Running up the front all night and uh, just managing to get the 53 home in uh, very very clean and pristine condition as well that's the way you need the race to run for you to take out the w yeah barely a scratch on it and uh look it's uh it's going to be saying foster's going to be very happy about his first cup victory this season first cup victory in the atari team and uh get it done in the chase as well that's going to be good news for him as he's as I said he currently sat in joint second place with that man, Michael Scurlock. Uh, Jason Martin, of course, leading the chase. He finished down in P7, so he's going to lose a handful of points. So that's good news for those guys. That's going to help them out for their championship contentions. The roof of the 53. And he's uh, 
decided to spare the winning motor and uh, just switch that one off. So a uh, fantastic result there. So just running you through the results here. But Foster, Michael Skirlock and Hamish Gallagher, our top three will be with us shortly in the commentary booth. And it was Andrew Dyson, Barry Neal, Neil Pearson. Uh, we had uh, Jason Martin, Matty Raymond, Aidan Schultz and Luke Traher rounding out the top ten. And it was Curtis Williams, Carol Walden, Micklemore. Clark, Vickers, Spencer, Urquio, Griffiths, and Daniel Hedeshe rounding out the top 20 finishes for this race. And that will uh, shake things up a little bit as well in the standings. So a, uh, an interesting one as far as the uh, outlook from here on in is concerned in the points for the chase. Yeah, very much so. It opens the championship for a few drivers, and it's... Uh... It's what we like to see, things getting a little bit closer, but Jason Martin, he's got a little bit of a buffer and he's going to be happy about that for tonight because uh, that wasn't the performance he will have wanted, but that is the exact performance that Foster and Skurlock needed. Yeah, absolutely right. So uh, they will be absolutely wrapped. Ed will be pumped with that one after a tough uh, main season. Uh, he'll be pumped to, uh, to get a win uh, in the chase, particularly this early in the chase as well. Uh, with uh, still six races to go after this one this evening. So we'll just get uh, the guys into the booth here. Just waiting on Michael Skurlock, but that uh, he's uh, just jumped in there. Does mean we can have a chat with the rest of the gang. Hamish Gallagher, first uh, time during the chase that you're in here without one of your teammates, mate, but a, a strong race tonight uh, under um, challenging circumstances. Uh, what are the challenging circumstances? Well, just doing 130 laps, mate, at uh, high speed. Um, you know, that can be oh, challenging. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, staying awake, right? <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. Whoever at NASCAR thinks we uh, this is the future, um, these cars need to boil in the head, eh? These uh, <laughs> things are junk to drive. But I think I just got a little bit lucky at this. Oh, I had a bit of clean air at the start of that, that uh, long green flag run. I mean, I could look after my tyres a little bit better than some of the others and... Uh, yeah, that was pretty much a drive around the circle for an hour or so. As so often happens in uh, NASCAR, you came under a little bit of uh, scrutiny there real late on in the race from uh, Andrew Dyson and, and Barry Neal, uh, just managing to keep them uh, out. Yeah, yeah, Barry let me go fairly early, uh, and he just hung on me. I figured he was looking after his tyres, going to try and get me right at the end. And um, yeah, that's what he was, that's, that was his plan. Uh, but I mean, you can just sort of pinch the guy right on the bottom, you can, they can't really do anything about it. Um, so that's what you do, and uh, yeah. Off you go. Well, mate, we'll, uh, we'll keep it short and sweet tonight. Uh, obviously, the usual shout-out. You'll have to do the full-team breakdown tonight because uh, there isn't anyone else here to support you. <laughs> yeah, it's first time having all, um, all one team, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just uh, well done to uh, the top three. Uh, Edward finally getting a win. Showing me up. Now I've got to get a win. About the only one in the top ten who hasn't had one. <laughs> Bit of pressure. <laughs> uh, yeah, just well done to... One of you guys, Anska, Mitch Boys, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Hamish Gallagher, the Mitch Motorsport, taking out third position here tonight at Vegas. Jump across to uh, Skirly Whirly, Mick Skirlock taking out uh, another podium tonight, another uh, one we made after the good run last night, and um, this one uh, probably a little sweeter, I think. Yeah, mate. Well, yeah, since the other day you said you hadn't seen me up here very often, I thought I might as well start getting just, back in, eh? <laughs> just pop in a bit more. Just get in there every time. Um, no, it was. I mean, it's re it's all relative, man. Like I, I did a race earlier this week in these, and I absolutely hated it. Like it was terrible. You go for the inside, like as always at Las Vegas. You save your tyres, you run the bottom, and you can start making moves. You know what I mean? Towards the end, this yep. time the tyres don't seem to go anywhere. You're just basically the same. You can do the same foot motion for the whole race. It's weird. It doesn't really slow down after a certain point. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. During the week, I was you go to the inside and you just get the outside manages to always slow the inside down with the arrow, and you always just get put back. And then a train of about ten people would pass you. But saying that, being out front the whole time, I thought it was pretty cool. I liked it. It was fun. Yeah. It was at a bit of a slow, I don't know what nationality he was on the, the fuel in my pit stop. It didn't look like he, was meant to, he belonged there. But uh, he took about one extra second to fill me up, and then Eddie got the 
the uh, jump out of the pits on me, and then yeah, it's so it's, it's just swaps positions, mate, because it was so hard to pass. I've tried for one lunge at the end there, but I uh, got a bit tight and banged into the wall. Yeah, we um we was we were calling that mate and said that you had to give something a try. It was worth it. You weren't going to drop drop a position, so uh, it was worth giving the run on the outside. Looked like you were going to pull it off, maybe uh, get the run there with those uh, special tyres they put on for you, but that wasn't quite to be. And um, but still a uh, a really strong uh, second, and obviously uh, as a result, uh, it's going to help you in the chase. Um, usual shout outs for you, mate. Yeah, the double Bs, the BMX Banditos. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's still ridiculous, don't worry. Um, uh, locked on iRacing podcast, FGME cast. E- Eddie for getting the win there. We had some good battles throughout that. It was good. Um, Hamish for coming third. He sounded excited there. Um, <laughs> and that's it, eh? Um, just Shout quickly. out to... Uh, um, Brian DeCarfia McCarthy. <laughs> you know, just a quick <laughs> quick question there as well. Uh, Dave Douglas just asking what what type of chips you're eating. Um, are they Sandboys? Oh, yeah, mate. The ones with all the, the, sh- the go-fast sugar on them, mate. Yep. <laughs> Very good. All right, Mick. Good to see you again in the booth uh, in the chase as well. And I'm um, sure to see you at some stage next week. Thank you. And over to race winner, Natari Autosport. And I may be wrong here, so do correct me if I am. But first win uh, for Natari Autosport in uh, the chase, um, obviously in this season. But uh, but before that as well, uh, Edward Foster, congratulations on taking out a, uh, a strategically well-played win tonight. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, yeah, we did have a, a win earlier on in the cup season with Daniel Hedishide at New Hampshire, of course. But, yeah, first uh, first cup win in the chase uh, for us. So, yeah, great. No, fantastic. Uh, just got the uh, the pip on uh, Skirley there in the pit stop. You had a really, really good entry into pit lane. Uh, meant that you were able to run down the lane uh, next to Skirley and then, uh, and then close it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, that... Really turned out to be the pivotal point, didn't it? Um, that pit stop. So, I mean, I was still into the pit, sort of behind him or or next to him, but he still had the advantage. I think he he would have expected, I think, to get out ahead of me, and certainly I expected him to get out ahead of me. And I was uh, quite happy to see that he didn't. And uh, having known how difficult it was to pass when I was behind him on a couple of lap fresher tyres, even um, I was able to make runs and get up to him, but I wasn't able to finish the job. And uh, I knew it was going to be difficult for him. So. Uh, very happy to see that. And then after after that, it was just a case of uh, making sure that he got uh, some nice helpings of dirty air for the rest of the run. <laughs> it, um, it looked like at a stage there, we are following along quite, close, quite closely even, uh, that uh, the uh, Natari boys were all going to get together and, uh, and have a run to the front. But that uh, first caution uh, hurt that. And then obviously the, uh, the quick caution uh, after that as well. Uh, meant that that didn't quite happen. And then you got an absolutely uh, fantastic storm through the field to get up behind Skirley before that uh, that last stop. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always done well here. This has always been one of the tracks where I've gone, all right, and it hasn't really seemed to matter what the car is, what the package is. Um, for some reason, I just click here. And uh, I probably should have run the Xfinity race here. And if it hadn't turned into a fuel mileage deal, I probably would have. And uh, I just I had a really good feeling coming in here. Um, even after uh, we kind of took a bit of a gamble staying out in that first stop and then the caution came out, we had no option but to pit because we'd already been run down and, you know, coming out in, I don't even know where we were, sort of 13th or something like that. Um, still felt good, still felt confident and just started picking them off one at a time. So, um, yeah, had a, had a good feeling about it and uh, it came true. So, yeah, very happy. Uh, absolutely. Dave Douglas in the chat here just saying that you probably just didn't take that windscreen tear off and that made all the difference. Uh, no, I actually did take it. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know what he's talking about, though. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, no, a good result there and obviously going to help consolidate your position in the chase. Um, it been nice and consistent for you, which is great. And uh, to get this win tonight, particularly with the uh, the other results, it's going to uh, work well for you. So, as usual, just uh, a big shout out to all of the usual people, please. Uh, yeah, so, of course, uh, shouts out to the other Natari boys. I think I was the only one of us who had a um, 
a, a race that was kind to them tonight. A um, few of them got caught up in a couple of bits and pieces, which uh, was a little unfortunate for them. But shouts out to them anyway. You know, great group to work with, and you know, it's it's um, it's been good to get through a bit of the turmoil that we had at the start of the year and really get sort of settled down and bedded down and get some good results now. So um, shouts out to them. Also, uh, Bridgestone Select, Two Fat Blokes, Ferguson Group Media, Race Magazine, and AJ Insurance Services as well. And um, to quote another famous Aussie who just came off a uh, fairly long dry spell, for those who thought I left, I never left. I just stepped aside for a while. <laughs> Very well done, of course. Uh, yeah, a good result there. And, uh, yeah, cracking one from that, Carl. Uh, we've had uh, – it's been another week of just ridiculous racing here on uh, on all of the Anscar series uh, that we broadcast. It has been indeed. And I've got to say, I'm, I'm absolutely shattered from it all. We've had too much good <laughs> racing. And uh, it's taken its toll on me this week. Uh, you know, I thought we'd have it easy having an extra night, day, day, uh, extra night off, of course, on the Tuesday night. Um, but no, it's actually made it worse. Yeah, so, I was just saying, no, uh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible, it's a, it's a good problem to have, though. Um, really good racing from everybody. And again, just fantastic finish to see here tonight. Uh, what a week of racing. And what another fantastic result for the Anscar series as well, just showing that some just the best of uh, the best oval racing in Australia, just some fantastic jobs from all of the drivers out there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just on that, of course, uh, you can watch the full live stream back on uh, FGME Cast uh, channels. We prefer to do that on YouTube if you are going to do it, but uh, across the socials. Do put together now some highlight packages as well and some other bits and pieces. So if you have tuned in and enjoyed what you're seeing, then do jump onto our uh, YouTube channel, FGM Ecast, and uh, hit that subscribe button. Turn the bell on, and uh, that means you will not miss out on any of the action that's coming across the screens at the moment. Of course, we're back Monday night with the Truck Series again, and uh, looking forward on that one at uh, heading to Eldora. And we've uh, got 100 laps there uh, on Monday night. And then we've got the final, the last chance saloon, of the, which is qualifying for uh, the next season, season five of the Oz Pro Am Sim Series as well. So that's on Tuesday night before we're back Wednesday with the Xfinity Series and, of course, back on Thursday with the next instalment of the chase. And uh, that's going to be an interesting one. We're going to head to Talladega. So uh, a, a high uh, pace race that's going to be. Yeah, very much so. Speed, super speedways always throw uh, a, mon a few dice on the, uh, the grid, and uh, you never know what exactly is going to happen. So who knows what will happen at Talladega, but it will be interesting to find out. Very much looking forward to next week's action. Uh, and, of course, make sure to join us here on FGM Ecast to catch that all. Absolutely. So from us, Carl, with you and myself, thank you for joining us. It's been a fantastic evening of racing. Fantastic week. Enjoy your weekend off if your footy team's playing in the grand final. Good luck to whoever it is that you support, and we'll see you on Monday evening on your e-place-for-pace FGM Ecast. Thank you very much for joining us, and good night.